The Singer Featherweight was launched in 1933 and production ended more than 30 years later in the late 1960s. These tiny machines have become very collectible in recent years. Their small size, light aluminium construction, superb stitch and convenient carry case have made them popular with quilters who find them easy to take along to their quilting groups. The featherweight story actually began in 1928 when the Standard Sewing Machine Company, in collaboration with General Electric, created the Sew Handy. The Standard Sewing Machine Company was sold to the Osan Corporation, which was then acquired by Singer. Singer then did a complete redesign of the machine to create the featherweight. The main features of the featherweight 221 are its small and compact size, the lightweight aluminium construction, of only 11 pounds, which is less than five kilograms, a compact carry case, it used standard needles and low shank presser feet, it was powerful and quiet, had a full rotary hook, giving a smoother operation, a fold up extension, and both forward and reverse stitching. It is only a straight stitch machine and uses an uncommon style of bobbin, and the 221 does not have the ability to drop the feed dogs. Over its long production run, there were slight variations to the design. Very early models had what's known as a school bell style bobbin tensioner. Early models had a fancy scroll pattern faceplate, while the later ones had a plainer striated faceplate. Some, but very few, had black faceplates. Even rarer still are the crinkle finish examples. There was a couple of different decal sets too. Some models had the light switch on the base, while others on the lamp assembly itself. The cases also varied a little. Early cases had a tray in the top to hold the accessories and foot pedal, although the foot pedals were difficult to fit in, along with a cable and a UK plug. Later cases had a clip in the top to hold the foot pedal, and a tray that clipped on the left hand side to hold the attachments. In the 1960s, Singer produced a tan coloured featherweight. This was mechanically identical to the black machine, but had a shaped and painted faceplate and no decals on the bed. It also had a different bobbin winder with a thumb tab to help hold it against the belt. The machine was a pale tan colour and came with a matching two tone tan and brown carry case. The tan models are amongst the rarer examples of the Singer featherweights and can command high prices. Slightly more common is the white featherweight. Strictly speaking, the colour was called pale turquoise, but it's often referred to as white, pale celery, or pale green. These machines had some mechanical differences to the other featherweights. The bobbin was not gear driven, rather it used an internal toothed belt. And the folding extension was shorter. Again, there were no decals on the bed, and the ones for the Singer Legend were in black. A cheaper, flat board was used for the drip tray. The foot pedal and power cord were hardwired into the machine, as well as some other smaller differences. The case for this machine was finished in green and white, or two-tone blue. Some were sold with soft-sided vinyl carry cases in either red or blue. Again, while not as rare as the tan featherweights, and as well as incorporating some cost-cutting measures, white featherweights are still highly sought after. The tan and the white models command around twice the price of a standard featherweight. The holy grail of featherweights has to be the Singer 222 model. This was produced from 1953, and only in Scotland. This featherweight had the advantage of having a removable bed to create a free arm machine. This made sewing cuffs very easy. It also had the ability to drop the feed dogs to allow darning or free motion embroidery. There was a unique embroidery foot included with the machine as standard. These machines command upwards of three times the cost of a standard 221 featherweight. So what to look for when purchasing a featherweight? Of course, condition is always important. Make sure the bobbin case is with the machine. These are easily lost and replacement ones can be expensive. Reproduction bobbin cases are available, but are of a poorer quality and often are problematic. 
There are many specialists around who can supply quality parts and help you keep your featherweight in tip-top condition. Cases are quite easily refurbished, although one issue seems to be that they can develop a bad smell. Some people put this down to the type of glue used in the case's construction, while I have found that most of the smell can come from the felt in the drip tray holding onto rancid oil. This can be rectified by washing the drip tray felt with paraffin or kerosene and allowing to air dry outdoors. Custom paint jobs on featherweights are becoming increasingly popular, especially in the United States. Some of these have spectacular results. This has just been a brief introduction to the Singer Featherweight. There's a wealth of information on the internet about these fascinating little machines. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching.